Am I live? Huh? <laughs> Talk to me. Am I live? Or am I not? I'm so confused. <laughs> I see some people. I'm live, you know. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so funny. I didn't know I was live already. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> I thought I was not live yet. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Let me see. Is this the brightest? Anyway, whatever. So I'm live. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I want to get water and my tissue i'm like okay now let me go live i didn't realize i was live praise god anywho praise the lord praise the lord welcome welcome people of god i greet you in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ that's why you always have to give me feedback eh? when i'm live you say hello to me you know you know how we roll so greet me in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Let's say hello. <laughs> that way I'll know I'm live. Ah. So how are you guys doing? I'm the woman that need I'm the woman that needs no introduction. You know my name, Bola, Bola Dumi. And you know where to find me. Royalproclamations.com if you do not. And, um, you know, look in the description section, so many other, so many links, so many links to our, the different arms of our ministry, where you can find our books and courses and registration for events and things like that. Everything is linked in every single one of our videos. Okay. Praise God. So I greet you. I greet you. I know I came out pretty much unannounced. And I, I do operate like that because I'm a woman of the spirit. Hashtag, I'm a woman of the spirit. And so, you know, I just flow. I like scheduling things and planning things. But, you know, oftentimes I just feel led and I do things at a whim. Okay? So, um, t subscribe if you like what you see here. And turn on your notifications. Because especially this weekend, this weekend is going to be a mar marathon, hashtag marathon of prophetic releases. This weekend is going to be a marathon of prophetic releases. I'm trying very hard to um, release the words that I feel that God is laying on my heart before I shut down for the homecoming course. Okay, and then talking about the homecoming course. You have only till Sunday the 10th, which is tomorrow, excuse me, at 11.59 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to enroll for the course. Okay? So um, I know that God is nudging one or two or three of you. We still have room for one, two or three, a couple of you. And I've been praying for you that you will respond to that nudge and you would enroll. Okay, it's a it's a free will um, love offering. Lord said I shouldn't charge for it. I should let you determine though it's worth to you. So you pray on it. Don't don't walk in the flesh. Don't walk in the flesh. Pray on it and say, Lord, what would you have me invest? It's an investment of your spiritual life. Invest in this because. It is that group, those who are enrolled, who will get the outline, the schedule, and will be able to participate with the, in, the, in the course, okay? The rest of you, I don't know how I'll be led. I honestly can't tell you right now how I'll be led, whether it's something I'll feel led to, um, you know, release publicly, maybe something on, our, on Conqueror's Academy. I don't know. I don't know right now. All I know right now is that God is calling us into this um, return on this journey to return back to him. And that this is our roadmap. This is the roadmap he's given us to do so. Okay, praise God. So we got those housekeeping matters out of the way. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this gathering that is unto you. 
and um, you know, a gathering of your people. And we thank you for the honor of your presence because you you honor your word. You said where two or three are gathered together in your name, you are there in the midst of them. And so we thank you for the honor of your presence. Open our hearts to hear. Open our, you know, open our ears to hear. Open our hearts to perceive and understand. And let your words mix with faith in our hearts and bring forth fruit of righteousness a hundredfold in Jesus' name, I cover the airwaves in the blood of Jesus. I cover every listener in the blood of Jesus. I cover myself in the blood of Jesus and the families we represent in the blood of Jesus, the communities we represent in the blood of Jesus. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for your direction and your guidance and your leading and unction and understanding and illumination in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. Hashtag amen. Are you in agreement with me? Come on, hashtag if you agree with me. So yeah, I'm back with what I consider part two. Part two of, um, you know, the word that I released decoding, you know, the prophetic signs um, and what God is saying to us of, of the uh, of the helicop Nigerian helicopter crash that happened on February 9, right? I've already released a word about it and um, I'll link that in the description section. But um, there's another part of the word that I glossed over at that time when I released it. I mentioned it in passing, glossed over it, didn't really dig into it because at that time, I didn't want the focus to be on the other side. Hashtag, you know what I mean? Can somebody say, I don't want to focus on the other side, you know, that, that dark side. We didn't, I didn't want it to, to us to focus on that and miss what God was saying, right? I wanted us to focus on God. So I just glossed over it and and and, and left it at that. But um, I have been following the, the services. I've been following it online. I've been praying and musing on it. And I feel like right now the Lord is saying, okay, Bola, look at the other side, dig deeper into it and, and on decode, decode the message, decode what God is saying. So the other side of it is the fact that it was a ritual. <laughs> you know, now we are on YouTube, we have to be speaking in tongues. <laughs> oh, oh, rishi, rishi. We have to be speaking in tongues <laughs> because the algorithm will just knock you off and then they will sh keep shadow banning you and suppressing your views. I told you censorship is increasing. But those of you know who know what I mean, please put it in the comment section, that word, okay? Even comments, they go into the comments, they delete comments. It's crazy. It's crazy. And so that's why you can't rely on this technology, especially when you are really after authentic word of God. You can't. And, you know, God told me that a long time ago, and, and, and we are working on, on, on building our own. We are. We are still on it. Okay? But, um, yeah, <laughs> you know, type in the chat. Let me see whether you know what I'm talking about. The other side of it is that it was a satanic R-I-T-U-A-L. It was a satanic R-I-T-U-L, right? That's the other side of it. And many of you may be a bit perplexed and be like, really? And so on and so forth. And I will tell you why. I will give you my reasons, the signs that showed, tells us that it was that. Okay? So let's start with the numbers, okay? Numbers. Let's look at all the numbers. Now, when we're looking at numbers, a quick disclaimer for those who are new. I didn't see you commenting and chatting. Can you hear me and writing what I said? Are you guys still there? Talk to me. Anyway, yeah, I said put it in the chat. I don't know whether there's a delay in your typing and your comments showing up, but I don't see, I didn't see that. But anywho, it was a satanic R-I-T-U-A-L. So let's look at some of the numbers, right? And, and let us examine that, that indicates that it was that. 
So, um, and then it had the disclaimer before I talk about numbers. Numbers is not, this is not numerology. Hashtag not numerology. Not angel numbers or angel cards. Okay? Praise God. Please hashtag. That is the demonic. All those numerology, angel cards, and really get into gematria and all of that are demonic, are demonic. But I always say, for there to be a demonic or a counterfeit, there must be an original, right? Yes or no? I mean, that's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. A counterfeit is just an imitation of the original. A counterfeit is just a perversion of the original. So that tells you that when it comes to numbers, biblical numbers exist, okay? I'm saying it because some of you may misunderstand it and may think that ah, Bola is now going into all this demonic stuff. No, it's not demonic. There's a whole book in the scriptures that is called a book of the book of numbers and numbers are prophetic numbers preach right creation was coded in numbers and the law said the numbers the signs and the moons and all these numbers and things will be for signs for us right okay so just understand that the no, that we, we know that. We know that. Some of it is Sunday School 101. We know the certain numbers, even without being very hyper-biblical, theologically sound. You know, 40. You know, Jesus was there for three days. He rose on the third day. He was Noah's belly three days. Jonah and all that. And so on and so forth. Anyway, I just wanted to get that out of the way. Especially if you're new to my ministry and all of this, you may be... Thinking, uh, uh, you know, like I said, thinking I'm, I'm kind of into all those things. No, I'm not. I'm not, not at all. I'm very much in my word, okay? But um, I can't throw away the baby with the bathwater and, and, and give everything to the devil, okay? The devil doesn't own the rainbow. And so I have a beautiful shirt that I love. It's one of my favorite shirts. Is 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 the rim color of the rainbow. I wear red, I wear black and white, I wear, you know, he doesn't own it, okay? Even though he does use it and perverts it. Okay, understood? Hashtag understood, 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 hashtag understood. If you understand where I'm coming from and you understand the balance and, and, and everything there, that, that this is definitely not that. So anyway, let's dive and look at the numbers first. The numbers first will tell you that it was a SR. Let's just call it SR. That is satanic R-I-T-U-A-L. Okay, SR. It was purely one. So it happened on the... On February 9, right? Right? Hashtag the number 9, right? That was the 40th day of the year. Hashtag the number 40. There were six passengers in the, in the helicopter. Hashtag the number 6. And three of the six were from an, a particular family, were a, a, a particular bloodline. Hashtag the number three, okay? Praise God. So, so we have the, our numbers now. Now, fast forward to the whole home going. The, you know, their funeral services and all of that. I kept wondering why there was a delay. I kept asking a couple of my friends, you know, and say, ah, did they not recover the body? I mean, were their body burnt? I mean, what, you know, what's going on? One of them is based in Nigeria. And I'm like, what's going on? Have you guys heard anything? Because it was taking long, a long time for, for me to, for them to come out with the whole thingy, right? And I understand that it was sudden. I understand that, but I didn't think it would take that long because I've been there before when we had to bring you know, somebody home from overseas and things like that, you know, but, um, so I kept wondering, but anyway, when they finally announced the dates of the thingy, it made sense. It started making sense and I got it. I'm like, aha. So let's look at the dates. The, the whole home going process began March 1, March 1. What number of day of the year was March 1? It was the 60th 
day, 60th day of the year, March 1. So hashtag your number six again. <laughs> six zero, six again. Okay. So they began that process there. They got the single one out of the way. Then these three, they began their series of, of um, you know, services and things like that for him, for them on, like I said, from the 60th day. Today is the burial. And what day of the year is this, people of God? 69th day. Hashtag the number again, 69. Okay? And what date is it today? March 9. Okay? 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 So now, now, people of God, turn the number 9 upside down. Turn the number 9 upside down. Just talk to me. Look at all those numbers. Apart from 40 and 3, which is different, we see 9, we see 69, we see 6, we see 60. The, the, the joint um, uleology was on the 66th day. My God, my God, my God. Do you see what I'm talking about? When you turn 9 upside down, what do you get? And all these 6, six passengers, 9th day, 9th day, 9th day, and put all the six and turn all it in that what do you get hashtag and then this year how many days are in this year three six six my god my god my god you can't make this stuff up open your spiritual ears and hear what the spirit is saying to the church open your ears to hear this to hear the scripture says that we must not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy i i am not one to be obsessed with the enemy but i am not naive hashtag i will not be naive i will not be ignorant because being ignorant means that you may become a victim. May God will not make you a victim and a casualty. Say amen, somebody. So we already see with all the numbers, and we know what the Satan's number is, the number of the Antichrist, the beast. We know it. Type it in the chat <laughs> if you know it. I mean, you, you, that's on the school 101. So that already tells you that it was not an accident. Hashtag, it was not an accident. It was a planned. Hashtag the word planned ritual. It was planned. It was planned. It wasn't an accident. Okay, we're still going on this journey. Ride with me. We're going. So we've looked at the numbers. And the numbers is already pointing that uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-uh-u
artist. And Alicia Keys was the co-artist, right? Usher ushered in that um, e -E -E SR, Alicia Keys unlocked it. My God, my God, good word, Holy Spirit. Good word, Holy Spirit. Do you get it? So it, the Super Bowl is an SR to unlock a massive global portal to usher in a demonic era and demonic um, season that they want to bring into existence. It is a portal. It is a ritualistic portal. That's what the Super Bowl is. And this is can be shocking for those of us who enjoy those sports. You know, it's so sad that these days there's actually nothing we can enjoy that is clean anymore. It's sad. Because I know some of you actually enjoy those sports. You know, I have my one of my sons, he loves it. And one time I see how him doing all the uh, uh, sign. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, what is this? What is this? What is this? It's it's a it's a it's a spiritual to open portals. But anyway, conversations about that. So that is it. So the, the number one thing that I want us to get, and those artists like Usher, like all of them, all of them finish, all of them, Alicia Keys. Even some gospel artists, those ones we will have those conversations other days because some of you right now are just thinking, oh my God, I, oh, this is unbelievable. For some of you, it's like confirmation. <laughs> like, okay, finally, I, I'm not going crazy. But for others, it's like shocking. So all those artists, all of them, including the gospel ones, okay? They are just puppets and... Uh, Satanist, that is Luciferians. There's no other name I can call them. Okay, and see how Alicia Keys was dressed. Look at the red. I mean, just look at the whole thing. I mean, it, it bothers me that as Christians, sometimes that thing doesn't grieve our spirit, and we don't we don't see it. We don't see it. And so the first thing that God is saying is that guard your ear and your eye gates, people of God. It, like I said, it's sad. They're not clean, uh, just innocent, pure entertainment anymore. I don't know if they ever were, but they're not. Neither is it just art. All these concerts, all these, it's not art. They are re -S -R -R. So that was what happened at the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl was to open a portal. And so anybody who knows about how the occult work is that they give a massive ritual sacrifice. They shed a lot of blood, right? To, uh, to you know, those blood, are, those demons are blood-sucking demons. They love blood. And they like to mimic Christ. You know, they mimic in terms of Christ being the uh, sacrificial lamb that was given to us, right? For the redemption of us to atone. So when they want to atone their own God, the Antichrist, they too, they give, you know, blood. So that's why, number two, that it happened around the Super Bowl. It was for the Super Bowl. And remember the Lord had told us weeks before, months actually before, that the Super Bowl will be prophetic. Okay? That we should watch out. So number, number three thing we have to look at are patterns. Hashtag the word patterns. 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 So in 2020, another 366 year, around the same time, okay, around end of January towards February, yeah, what did we see? What happened? What kind of other helicopter crash did we see? And so on and so forth, where there was a lineage, a bloodline, family kind of connection that they did as that year's re i t u a l i t r i t u a l okay so we know about it it was kobe bryant and and um and his 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 daughter similar similar location 
similar thingy, same kind of year patterns. Watch out for patterns. The devil doesn't have new tricks. Hashtag, he doesn't have new tricks. The same tricks he was been using in the garden for Adam and Eve is the same one he's using today. Say mercy, Lord. So we saw that, right? And I've talked to us about repetitive patterns, okay? I'll link again in the description section. So the second thing that God is letting us know and wants us to understand that this year, 2024, the reason why it is such a apocalyptic year is such a, a and a so much in, in evil in this year another lockdown another pl I, i've been talking about what i'm talking about that uh, is because it's a 366 year we're going to be seeing more of this say mercy lord mercy lord that's why you must pay attention to the instructions that god is giving is it because only those who obey the instructions will be preserved. And one of the instructions is about us coming back to the heart of worship. Cause coming to repentance, a global call to repentance. And I've been screaming and trying to invite some of you to partake in this thing so we can go before the throne of grace. But I digress. Let's come back to the signs. Okay, so we see patterns here. That's the second thing. The third thing that I want to point out to let you know that this was planned is that while I was watching a different part of the of the thingy of the services um, and and kept wondering why Nigeria <laughs> why Nigeria why Nigeria I started seeing it was a global affair uh -uh. Ex-presidents were in attendance. Who knows what I'm talking about? Um, head of states were in attendance. Uh -uh. I'm like, who is this guy? Why Nigeria? Why is this thing so big like that? I can't just see all these big people, celebrities, artists, this and that. Uh -uh. And it reminded me of something in 2022, also 2020, also in Nigeria. I won't talk about that. But uh -uh. I saw a similar pattern there. And so I started asking God, I said, why Nigeria? Why Nigeria? What was it? Ah, this was, um, it was planned, but yeah. Then I got my answer while I was watching one of the services. While I was watching one of the services, and I just saw it like that. Bam! The Nigerian Brotherhood. My God, my God. God, my God, the Nigerian Brotherhood, Jesus, Nigerian Brotherhood. You see, the whole Freemasonry and Illuminati, huh? they have chapters, they're a global entity or uh, cult and demonic, you know, but they have branches. They have a central governing that is right here in the U.S. And then they have branches. And so Nigeria had to be the one to bring in, host the R-I-T-U-E-L. Yes. So that all of those who were involved in the uh, in the uh, um the calamity or what accident or the whatever were all part of it oh sadly to say they were all in it they were part of the brotherhood they were they were they were the guy the banker the other one the other one even his child even his son they had brought them in they were. And so I just saw it in the spirit, the Nigerian Brotherhood, and I began to understand. So let me explain the Nigerian Brotherhood and the revelation God gave me. The economic arm, or those who are controlling the business arm of the Brotherhood, is that Nigerian um, um, 
billionaire, the only African billionaire in Nigeria. Many of you know his name. You know him, AK. His initials are A. His first name is A. No, no, no. Last name is D. His first name is A. His last name is D. Starts with D. Yeah. He is the head. Okay? Because for you to have the kind of money he has, they are going to bring you in. And you can't have that kind of money and, be, and not be in, in. So they brought him in officially a couple of years ago. They had an um, was it? humiliation sacrifice for him. That was when, you know, can you remember when? Because he, when you look at him, it's almost like his reputation is precinct. Precinct. Very precinct. Very clean, you know. And, and so there was this year that there was this, thing where they were showing his behind with one girl woman coming out about the affair how many of you can remember that it was a humiliation sacrifice that's when he had to officially come in and now you see him with uh, the microsoft guy and all of that they're in that's a brotherhood forget anybody who has billions years on this earth that is not inside it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie so he's the economic head of it, right? And then, of course, bankers are in it. Then there are also politicians in it, the political elite, because they have a political arm. They have head of states and presidents who are in it too. And all the presidents, hi, yeah, 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 mercy, Lord, and head of states are in it, are in it. Anybody in the political elite, in your country, in any nation under the sound of my voice, they're in it. Now, they also have a spiritual arm. So we have pastors who are part of them. Pastors. I've told you this before. Pastors. Many pastors. Now, the Spirit of God told me that all the people who ministered, anyone who ministered, that I mean, I call it ministered, that presented on the platform, right? And during that service, all of them without exception are part of the brotherhood. All of them. When I say no exception, type hashtag no exception. None. Including your favorite preacher that was there. Including the young one that was preaching there. The young one. Mm, that is an actor. All of them finish from A to Z. All of them that what mounted that podium to preach or minister one way or the other. Apart from maybe their family members, maybe some of his siblings and his children, the women they may not know. You know they may be innocent, but anybody else, forget it. They were all, they're all in it. So it was a planned one. And Nigeria had to host it. The Nigeria had to host it. It was planned because one of his, the, um, the CEO's good friend, his best friend, was the one who planned the trip. <laughs> he planned the trip. There's a way they tell them. They, they, know, they know what's coming, but they don't know all the details. He planned the trip. It was actually in America. It was during conversation of the driver that I picked that up. He was in America. I planned the trip. You see, he planned the trip because you know, this is what happens when you have too much money. And sometimes when you go and make dine with the devil and make covenants, we're going to come to that in a bit. He planned the trip. He had already gone ahead of them, planned the whole thing. So it was planned. It was not an accident. And it obviously was the one who called them and said, ah, boys, let's go and watch Let's go and watch the Super Bowl, you know, networking or whatever other reason they had, you know. And they, they called them and they were stupid. And the reason why the Lord was showing me that it was Nigeria, they hosted it, is because they would kick off the um, economic reset. I told, that, I told you that in part one, that it's going to the chain of reaction following this. Just mark my words. Give it time. We're going to start seeing run on the banks. We're going to see some economic collapse. We're just going to see a chain of reactions. I'm sorry for Nigerians. 
I'm sorry for Nigerians. Nigerians are still playing with God. They're still looking at some of my messages called to repentance and looking at me and pushing back. <laughs> you guys don't know what has hit you yet. You don't. You think hardship is now? And you are still running to all your, your pastors and your favorite churches following the false Christ? The reason why it's compatible, that Christ is compatible with their faith, is because it's a false Christ. It's a Christ that promotes the lust of the flesh and all of that, and says the only thing you need is to believe. You need more than belief. You need repentance. You need a changed life. You need to be like Zacchaeus. When Zacchaeus came to Christ, he said, I repented, I'm not going to do this, and... And the money I even stole, I'm going to give back. A fourfold. That's what repentance is. That's the true Christ. Not that you keep stealing it and keep looting the treasury and, and making life hard for people and oppressing them and being greedy. And then go and, and say, I'm a believer and God will forgive my sins. It's a lie. It's a lie. Say mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord, we repent. So it was planned. It was planned. And let me say this about one of your Jews that ministered. Okay? That ministered. He also is part of it. I've already said that before. Because some of you still hold him in high esteem. Why is he always around politicians? Why? Always in the state house. Why are politicians always coming to want to leverage his platform and want blessing before they come into government? Why? 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 What kind of preacher is that? What was he doing all over the United Nations and things like that? Why? Is he in it? That's where they get their money. They launder the money there. Their lavish lifestyle. The, the jets they have and all that. All their boys and members come and Put, pour, pour the money there. Praise God. Say mercy, Lord. So it was planned. It was a complete, complete um, thingy. I, SR. Completely one of that. Very sad. Very sad. Now let's come to the lessons that I believe God has for us. What he wants us to learn. <sighs> mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. It's sad. <laughs> but the shaking has begun. Because God is going to use this to really bring us, like I said, not just Nigeria, all of us. The things that are coming in this year, 366. Hey, hey. I've been trying to warn you people, but I pray some of you will just hear. That's just my prayer. You're not ready for it. You're not ready for it. You're not ready for it. I'm concerned, but that's not where I'm going. So what is God saying? You know, as I kept pondering and praying on it and musing on it and all of that, <sighs> and saying, okay, God, yeah, I, I get you. You don't want us to be ignorant. You want us not to be aware. He gave me about five, five, Five lessons and things he wants us to be uh, beware of. And I'll, before I run into them, I want to speak to the brotherhood in Nigeria. Because they watch me. Oh yeah, I know you guys watch me. I know you do. 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 God loves you. God loves you. The true God, the true and living God, Yahweh, Yahuwah. He loves you. And he doesn't want you to perish. He doesn't want your soul to perish. He doesn't want you to be eternally damned and separated from him. Because there's no return after that. That, that is irreversible. It's irreversible. And because of that, he sent his son to Jesus to die for you on the cross. And contrary to what gospel you have heard before now, and some of you have preached, just not, belief alone is not enough for you to make it to heaven. 
Mm, I alluded to that a second ago. There's a requirement for you to repent. There's a requirement for you to repent. Repent of all the things you're doing in the dark. You know what I'm talking about. Repent. All those rituals and covenants and things you drink and eat and sign and engrave. And repent of your greed. Repent of your greed. God hates wickedness. He loves righteousness. Repent. Come out from them. Break those covenants. Renounce them. Yeah, it may mean that you will lose your life, but you won't lose your soul. I appeal to you. Repent. Stop it. Stop it. That's the word of God to you. That's the word of God to you. That's the word of God to you. Because after all, vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. Are you going to take that money to heaven with you? You're not. You're not. You're not. You're not. So now let us come to the five lessons quickly as I close. Number one, the Lord said, beware of your ambition. It's an ABC thing. Beware of your ambition. Beware of your ambitions. Beware of your ambitions. I heard that guy in um, the CEO, you know, they only were signed. A very ambitious guy. Very ambitious guy from when he was a kid. Beware of your ambitions. Even some of your ambitions may be good, but they may not be godly. They may not be of God. Do you get it? You know, ambition can be good, a good thing. You can have some good ambitions. I have some ambitions, right? I want to change the world. I want to win a million souls for Christ. I want to fill stadiums. I want to preach the gospel to the four, of the kingdom to the four corners of the earth. I want to make disciples for nations. I want to release the next generation of I want to die empty. <laughs> but recently, the Lord asked me to really examine my heart and what is driving my ambition and some of my ambitions. And one or, one or two of them, the Lord showed me that trauma was what was driving it. The flesh was what was driving it. And he told me, put it on the back burner. I'm not going to give that to you. That's from your flesh, Bola. Check your ambition. Because if you don't check your ambition, it may lead you to other things. Some of us are so ambitious for wealth, for money, for family, for husband. You will do anything. You won't even know when you have started opening up yourself to the demonic realm and attracting all kinds of things into your life. Say, mercy, Lord. Say, give me a heart that truly pants out you, after you. And let my desire be for you and you alone. You will have your ambition. That's number one. Because all these people, part of it is ambition. They want to make it. They want to be with the big boys. They want to, uh, how do they call that song? Uh, I want to bang, bang. I forgot how they sing that song. You want to be with the big boys. You want to be, you must want to be where it's happening. Huh? Beware of all your ambition. Beware of this desire for celebrity lifestyle. Beware of your desire for, for wealth and money. We need money. Come on. Uh-uh. As long as you are breathing, you will need money. <laughs> if I, the Lord joked with me the other day. <laughs> he joked with me the other day. He said, but after you even die, you still need money. Your graveyard, they will be paying monthly dues for it. <laughs> <laughs> to rent it. The housekeeper who will be going to do flowers, they'll be playing money. <laughs> he said, you are going to, even after you die. Because he was trying to tell me, Bola, keep calm. <laughs> Stop worrying about money, 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 money. Uh, you know. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against that. Of course, we need money. 
But Paul said that godliness with contentment is great gain. That when I have, you know, raiment and food, be content. Be content. Don't buy into this American dream. This celebrity lifestyle that many of us, they sold to us to seduce us. To have relationship with this mammon spirit and this Asherod Baal God. Beware. Be content. Say, Father, make me content and satisfied. If you have a roof over your head, you have somewhere you put your head at night, you are eating, God blesses you with good health. What are you looking for again? Oju Kokoro, greed is what is the next thing. And that's the, the churchianity. That's a word of faith thing. They flash their diamonds. They flash their brand names. I'm talking of churches. They flash their Louis Vuitton and all kinds of things to make you desire it. To make you like, hey, hey what is wrong with me? They throw their numbers. They're making hate figures. Is that? And then slowly and surely you two start saying, ha, ha, something must be wrong with me. I want in. It's happened to me before. <laughs> say mercy lord ah, you say i want in i want in say oh, god deliver me from every ungodly desire deliver me from every ungodly desire every un ungodly ambition deliver me because this is what leads many of these people into the brotherhood this is why some of us are in certain fraternities and sororities Number two, he gave me A, B, C, E, D, E. Be aware of your beliefs. Hashtag, be aware of your beliefs. God is talking to each and every one of us because what is coming? Hey, I keep telling you. And I know you are thinking about, La, what is this prophet of doom? <laughs> it's what I'm seeing, you know. I saw this ahead of time. Did I not see it? Did I not release it in my 2024 word? That I saw bloodlines. I saw plane crash. Everything I said I was seeing. We are starting to see it now. So it's not about being a prophet of doom. God reveals to redeem. He warns you ahead before the destruction. He calls you to, to, to repentance before he brings that judgment. You hear me, people of God? So your beliefs... Say mercy, Lord, your beliefs. Because your beliefs, is it in accordance with the word of God? Ah, I left my word. Is it contextually in accordance with the word of God? Many of you have believed a lie. You are believing the word of faith, prosperity, gospel. You are not believing the true Christ. You are not, believe, you are not, you are not believers of the real. As you think you are. So go on and re-examine your belief. Let's, that's why I'm inviting you again. Let's come back to the heart of worship and reintroduce ourselves to God and God to introduce himself to us and rediscover him. Rediscover him. It's a reintroduction. Because the one we met before is a caricature, is the false Christ. Beware of your beliefs. All this, God wants to bless you. God wants to do this. God wants to increase you. God wants to promote you. God wants to avenge your enemies. God wants to give you millions. God wants to give you uh, trillions. It may not be for you. Ouch. God may not want to give you a husband. He may want you to wait. Like he's dealing with me. Wait. You may delay it. He may want to teach you other things. What God wants to give you more than anything is for you to be conformed to the image of Christ. To build your character. To cleanse you. To are you to be like him and represent him on the earth. That's his desire more than all this. Today, he wants to do this for you. Everything is about you. Watch your beliefs. Watch it. Which brings me to number three that he said, which is C. Watch your connections. Because it's one friend that will call another friend into this brotherhood. Is that not how it works? Watch your connections. Watch your associations. When they see that you two want to be with the big boys, you want to bang bang. Every time I type that thing. How do you call that thing now? 
Is it do you want to bamba? Is it bamba, gamba, or whatever it is, that song? Once your friends start noticing you want to be, they'll start introducing you to other things. Let's go now. Ah, uh, it's not demonic, irony. Uh, the Christians are there. Your pastor self, they there. It's just for connection and for money. Be careful. And be careful of all this, your connections to all these prophets and churches. See, churches. Because they are, they are seducing you. What you hear is what you become. Faith comes by hearing. So you, you are, what you keep hearing from them will start affecting you. It will affect your belief. Your connections also impact your, your, the covenants and curses. You see, some of these people that was involved in the thingy, their parents is the one who brought them in. Their parents is the one who brought them in. Their parents are in the brotherhood. The parents. Their covenants. And the children to come in and go and, you know, they join those clubs and they continue it as a generational thing. Sadly. You have to break your, uh, your household covenants. Say, Lord, deliver me from every generational covenant and portal. The one my father made, the one I don't know, the one my mother made. You must have seen me recently. Recently. Repenting on behalf of my father. The sins of my father. As God was showing me how it was impacting me. It was affecting me. I know it's hard because we love our parents. Some of them, they join innocently. Some of them, is for, they say it's for protection. Some of them is the same way somebody introduced them that come and be a part of it. Many of the fathers of some of these people, they also are in the occult, they are Oboni, they are these, they are, they are, they are, you know. Some of their fathers are in it from generations. Like I was saying, this political elite are second generation politicians who stole money. They were born in it and they continue. So be aware, beware of your connections, of the covenants, of the curses and the churches. The churches. Except, of course, you want it. You want what you want. You want what you want. Some of you, you don't care. You don't care. Your desire for, for lust of the flesh, the pride of life, it, it overcomes all these things I'm talking about. You don't care. You say, who has been to heaven before? Let us enjoy this world before. I'm sorry for you. I'm sorry for you. <laughs> the lake of fire is real low. We can't continue in the sins of your fathers. We cannot. We have to come out. I'm going to come to that in the, at the, in the end. You have to come out. You have to come out. That's another C. Come out. When we get offline, look at your, your contacts. Look at all the people you are following. All those demonic, all those, just delete, 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 delete. Guard your ear. I don't want to be hearing nonsense again. And I don't want to be a part of any of these churchianity things again. Because when the judgment, God begins to rain down his judgment like this. Ha! <laughs> you will escape. He said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, Come out from amongst them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. You are part of unclean things. You are giving to unclean things. You are praying on unclean altars. Say, forgive me, Lord. Because you want to bang back. You want to be with them. You want money. You want this. You are not content. You are not satisfied with the little God is providing for you. Every day they tell you this is the standard. If you don't have, if you don't have millions, if you are not making eight figures, ten figures, then when you make ten figures, they said now nah, your next level is twelve, and you are, you have to carry a designer bag. I remember recently, my my younger lion came into my closet. He went into my closet, ah, and he said, "Mom, I'm surprised you don't have an LV, <laughs> like a, a Louis Vuitton designer." He said, "I'm surprised." I said, 
I'm not into those kind of things. But I showed him one of my pocket books that was crooked. I said it's more expensive than a Louis Vuitton, even though it was a gift. They gave me as a gift when I went to South Africa many years ago. Those of you who know, know. Huh? Be weird. Stop all those desires. What will you do with the designer? Eh? What will designer do for you? What? All this materialism. Say mercy, Lord. So beware of these connections. That's C. He said decide. D. D. Decisions. This is a decisive year. This is the year that you choose ye this day whom you will serve. The line has been drawn. I told you judgment is coming. These are the days of vengeance. Some of these things, God is the one allowing it. He's the one. He said, I will shake the heavens, I will shake the earth. When he starts shaking Nigeria, he'll go to Kenya, he'll go to America, shake everything that <laughs> I'm telling you. So you decide, decide. Say, I will choose today Christ, the true Christ. I will choose life. Joshua 24 for 2024. I will choose life. Say, I will choose life. They give them all choices. These people, they give them choices. You have a choice to make. He made the decision to go into it himself. They make their decisions. They write the oath. The, that young one in Nigeria, yes, you watch me, I know, I've talked to you already. His, his ambition to be a Nollywood actor, to be an A-lister, is what led him there. you see him with all his signs. Decide! Say, today I choose life, I choose you, God. I know it's not easy, it's a narrow gate. And it's tough to be separate from the world. But it's worth it. But it's tough. I'm not denying that. It's a lonely road. And there are times where you have to, you look over your shoulder, you look to the right hand and say, uh-uh, why is my own so hard like this? Look at all these people. They seem to be blessed. I, I posted that on social media one day. You feel salty, <laughs> like the psalmist in Psalm 73. Until he went to go and see their end. And when God reminds me of their end, I'm like, thank you, Father. I don't want it. I don't want it. It's too risky to play with my soul like that. Which brings me to the last one, the E. Eternity. Be eternity conscious. Huh. Embrace your mortality. Embrace your mortality. Embrace your morality. And live for eternity. And set your affections on things above. The richest man that ever lived, richer than all the billionaires, the AD in Africa, the all the ones, the Microsoft one, the, all the other big, big ones that you guys, including Trump and all these billionaires, they are not as rich as Solomon. Solomon is who they are chasing after. <laughs> no, they are chasing after Solomon. That's why they want to build the third temple. And they say some of the mysteries they are getting is from Solomon. Solomon. And yes, Solomon said, vanity upon vanity. Now, the, the CEO, they said he just built a 10,000 or 20,000 square feet home in one of the poshest neighborhood zip codes in, in Lagos, Nigeria. What has happened to it now? Did he go home with it? All the millions you had and giving here and spending there, the whole bank thing, we will see. Did he die? Did he carry it? Did he carry it? Hmm? Talk to me. He didn't carry it now. The richest man, Solomon, said vanity upon vanity. Say, I will live for eternity. I will make my mark for eternity. Vanity. You're about to say, I saw me. I saw. When all is said and done, that's it. Your carcass is finished. It's finished. And it can be any time. 
Look at the 29 year old. Georgetown, Harvard, Princeton, Yale. It's good. Mm, that's where it ends. Embrace your mortality and live for eternity. That's a good word. Ooh, I like that. That's a whole t shirt. Type it in the chat. Embrace your mortality and live for eternity. Hashtag, I want everybody to hashtag and, and affirm that. I will embrace my mortality and live for eternity. I will embrace my mortality and live for eternity. Because we're all pilgrims and sojourners. Live for eternity. Set your affections on things above. Get to know God for real, for real. Get to back to the heart of worship. Focus on the major and major on the major. Get back to what it really means and matters to follow God and seek after him and his kingdom first. And his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. And by the way, some of you said I flashed a sign because I was doing their sign. Yeah, I'm not. You must be dumb if you ever think that I'm, 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 I'm part of them. You, you are dumb. No, seriously. You wouldn't recognize the real Christ if he stood in front of you. If you think the way I go on and in my word and everything that I have anything to do with the dark side. You wouldn't recognize Christ, the real one, if he stood in front of you like this. Because some, I just heard that. Some of them would say, ah, she flashed the sign while she was preaching. Stop it. Don't be so dumb and so foolish. Stop it. Stop it. So, people of God, these are sobering times. These are very sobering times. Very sobering times. And I must say that, you know, I, I still feel very sad. I'm not mocking them. I'm not mocking them. It's not mocking them, not at all. I felt very sad and emotional. You know, it's not, you know, but I have to put my emotions aside and come out uh, uh, and, and speak what God is saying as a leader in the body of Christ. I have to. So if this is not about me mocking them. This is not pointing fingers. This is not being self-righteous. Like I said, I have been spending time repenting myself, covenants my parents made, knowingly or unknowingly, checking my life, checking my heart, checking my motives, my ambitions and everything, repenting and asking God for cleansing and mercy, interceding for my kids and things like that. Because God does visit the iniquities of the fathers. He does. To the third and fourth generation. <sighs> Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Mercy, Lord. Just say mercy, Lord. So I'll see you guys. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back. I don't know whether what you have to say and share. I, I didn't have time to look through your comments. Let us engage just for the next 60 seconds. Let me see what you have to say. Has this been blessed? Have you been blessed by this? Have you been encouraged, you know, to really get back to God? Get back to God. Get back to serious business. Our souls are not something to play with. Very valuable. Christ died for that. And, um, yeah, it's just time to get really serious. Okay, I know it's sobering, but it's sobering times. And so I will be back. I told you this weekend will be marathon. So subscribe, turn on your notifications. I still have one or two more words. I want to release them before I, I, I shut down as I go and prepare for the, for the um, homecoming course. So I want to release those words. So just subscribe. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> One or two more. Okay, guys, I love you. What are you guys saying? I don't see any more comments there. But, um, yeah, leave your comments. Let's chat. Let's engage. 
in the what did this person say i can't even see i can't read <laughs> because of the light uh, i'll read your comments later and well let's continue the conversation and the comments and things like that come out from amongst them people of god stop following all these people that are going to be messing up your theology I still see some of you following them, listening to their videos. YouTube keeps telling me that you are still listening to this one and you listen to this one. And I'll be like, uh -uh. with all I'm saying, what is the, why, why? They'll jump from here to here. You'll go from here to here. You know, they will well transfer. Enemy wants to, you know, we have to grow up. God is calling us higher. Don't be a babe. Stop being tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine. I pray that God will really circumcise your heart and crucify your fleshly desires so that the desire in you now is for God, for Him, for His Word. And that when you come across places, you know, that really are giving you that real filet mignon, that you stay there and you stop jumping, you know. Because the days that are coming, that those things do not help you. <laughs> As my people will say, oh. <laughs> but anyway, I love you. And he loves you so much more. I'll see you guys soon. Ciao. Again, it's Bola. Bola Domi. Royalproclamations.com. Bye.